Now, when it comes to UI design grid systems, you probably have so many questions. How many columns? What are the margins? What are gutters? What if I'm designing for mobile devices? What if I'm designing for desktop devices? There are so many questions and it's endless. So in this all-in-one masterclass, we will cover everything to do with UI design grids. And the best part is we're going to do it together with a real world project. So let's dive in. On my screen over here, you can see I have the website dribble.com opened. I do like the fact that it's got a pretty simple layout to help you understand how to utilize grid layouts or grid systems in your UI designs. Let me right click on this website, hit inspect. We're gonna go ahead, I'm gonna walk you through all the things that you should look out for when you are creating a grid system. And then we're gonna actually go ahead and recreate this in Figma so you know how to do every single little step. So by the end of this video, you will feel confident, you'll know everything that has to do with grid systems and you'll probably like it so much that you'll gently smash the like button. Let's go ahead and take a look. Now, what I wanna do is I wanna resize my viewport all the way down to mobile size, okay? So as you can see, as I'm scaling this uh, viewport up and down, you can see that the layout will adapt, but at a very specific viewport size, it stops reacting. So if I go all the way down to 320, as you can see, right after 320, the layout stops adapting. So we know right away from zero to 320, there is a breakpoint. And you'll know what I mean if you follow along. Now, as I continue to expand, you'll see that once it hits around 6.30, it starts to split. So let's take a look at 6.30, right there. Oh, you got me right there. The layout splits into two columns, right? Let's take note, when does it change once again? That we can go further, further, and we can see around there, there is a major change. So at around 9.60, which is a very common breakpoint, bang, Oh, you got me right there, three columns. And then we go further, uh, increasing the viewport size and we'll go to four columns eventually, right there. So that was around one, three, four, oh, one, three, sorry, four, six, okay, four, six. And then eventually it goes up to five columns, as you can see right there, 9.30 or nine, let's see, nine, whoop, where did it change? Around 9.80, 9.83, okay, whoops, 9.8 three, bang right there, nine, eight, four. As we start to scale the viewport up and down, there were some key breakpoints where the layout will start to change. With this understanding, let's jump into Figma and start recreating this grid system or grid layout so you understand how to do this step by step. So I'm gonna go over into Figma, I'm gonna hit F on my keyboard, I'm going to phone and for the iPhone SE, that is the 320 by 568 viewport size, right? So that's the standard viewport size for the iPhone SE. That's generally the smallest breakpoint that you'll deal with. So that's zero to 320 pixels. Now, if I go back into a uh, dribble, let's go ahead and take a look at one of the main breakpoints. So that was around 630, okay? If you remember around 630 right there, bang, you can see the number changes up at the top. So 630 right there, oh, got me right there. So. We're gonna go ahead very quickly. I'm gonna go Command D, duplicate that frame, and I'm gonna change the width to 630. Pretty simple, right? We're, we're gonna nail, we're gonna master UI grids fairly quickly. Let's go ahead and increase the viewport size a little bit more. You can see that there are some slight changes in the layout over here at around 768, but I'm going to skip that mainly because there is a major change and we're gonna create breakpoints for every single part. This video might go for too long. So I'm focusing on more on the larger changes. So around 960, Right there, you can see 960, two columns, uh, three columns. So I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate this, change it to 960. And I might just go ahead and do one more. So we might just go ahead and stretch this all the way out to, nine, to five columns, um, just to exaggerate the changes so you can see the key differences. So I think around 984, right there in the top right corner of the screen, you can see that it changes to five columns, okay? 1983. So I'm gonna duplicate this to 1983. Okay, cool. So now that we've got our key breakpoints, I'm gonna go ahead and start to design the grid layout. So selecting the frame, under layout grid, I'm gonna hit the plus. I'm gonna click the grid icon, change grid to columns, count to four, keep it at stretch. 
the margins now. The margins, let's just quickly refer back to Dribble and see what sort of spacing that we're working with. Now, we won't be utilizing the exact measurements. I'm just gonna quickly eyeball this for you so we don't waste too much time. But we can see that it's around 16 to 20 pixels on the left and right. And because it's just a one column grid, we can use four columns, we can use one columns, it doesn't really matter. But what we're gonna do, be doing is we're gonna keep the margins to 16 and we're gonna keep the gutter to eight. Here inside, I'm gonna go ahead and draw down a frame for the content, all right? So I'm just gonna use this frame as the content. And inside this frame, I'm gonna go ahead and set the constraints to left and right, just to make sure as we extend our viewport, that the content, as you can see, sticks to the left and right. And then inside this content, I'm gonna hit R on my keyboard. I'm just gonna draw down a rectangle, okay? Perfect. Now, what I wanna do is I wanna make sure that the frame, I'm now gonna go and hit Shift A, and this will turn this into an auto layout. Now, if you want to learn more about auto layouts, more advanced techniques, learn my end-to-end -end process for how to manage an entire project, all within Figma with industry leading tips and tricks, then make sure to check out my Figma Masterclass course. I can't cover everything in YouTube videos. So make sure to check out the link. There's a 10% off coupon code. But with that said, let's continue with this tutorial. Quickly stretch this uh, content out. I might just rename this to content, as you can see right there. And I'm gonna keep that centered on the top. I'm gonna change that to uh, fixed. Then for the rectangle, I'm gonna change this to fill container, okay? Now, because we've got the auto layout, and once again, I'm not going to explain how to utilize auto layouts. Hopefully you already understand how to use them. If not, check out my Figma Masterclass. We're gonna change this to 16 to keep our content within the grid layout. So as you can see, if I now stretch this out, whoops, let me just quickly change the rectangle to fill and make sure the content is left and right, just like that. We can see that the, the content inside stretches just like dribble, right? So if we go back to dribble, you can see that if I go ahead and change this, Voila, you can see that it's exactly the same, behaves the same. So if we go to 6.30, right, if we go all the way to 6.30, oh, you got me right there, two columns, one to two, one to two, boom, 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 boom. So I'm gonna go back to Figma, I'm gonna select the content, copy this, go to the 768, oh sorry, 6.30, paste this down, I'm gonna stretch this all the way out to the left and right, okay, so we've got the content. I'm then going to go back to my previous design, select the layout grid by selecting the side, Command C, pop it down, Command V. So I'm gonna bring the same layout grid over to the 630 breakpoint. Now, the thing that we need to notice here is in the 630 breakpoint, the sides, so left and right maintains, still looks like it's 16 pixels or 20 pixels, but then on the inside, it seems like it's doubled. So if we wanna maintain the same or appropriate grid layout for dribble, we then need to go to layout columns, keep the margins at 16, and we might increase the gutter to 32 just so it's double 16, okay? So now if I go ahead and just change my auto layout, select my auto layout, making sure the direction is horizontal, making sure the space between is 32 because we've got 32 space in between each item, I can then duplicate this rectangle and you can see immediately based on our auto layout constraints, I can now, let me just move this down over here, expand this, right? And it's going to maintain the dribble layout. Wow, magic, right? So if I go back, as you can see, it's exactly what we need, okay? So I'm gonna move this back up and then let's take a look at the third one. So the third one is 960 pixels. So we're talking about anything beyond 630, right? This is 630. Anything beyond 630 all the way to 960, we want to make sure that, so let's just go right there. So 630 to 960 is also going to maintain two column grid, right? So Actually, let's go 960, that's actually the same. So let's just go ahead and take a look at 960 to, let's just take a look at this one. So that's 1983. So for this one, let's do four or three columns for this one. So three columns over here, I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna go select, copy the grid, paste the grid down, and I'm gonna change this to 12 because anything beyond 768, I generally will use 12 columns because we've got a lot more elements on the page. And I wanna make sure that we have enough columns to sort of structure our content. If you don't have enough columns, you might not be able to really get a nice layout or balanced layout. So over here, we can take a look at this uh, layout over here. 
you can see that the spacing on the sides are increasing. So I would say maybe that's 32 pixels. And I would say the spacing in between is also a little bit larger. So we might actually go with 24 and 32 over here. So let's go 24 for the margins and 32 for the gutters. So as you can see, if we extend that, and we can go ahead and double click on our content, paste our content down, stretch this all the way out, and then go ahead and duplicate the rectangles and make sure that our auto layout settings, 32 on the sides and 24 on the left and right. Perfect, there we go. So now if I go ahead and, whoops, let me just delete one of the rectangles. If we go ahead and resize this, this is pretty much exactly what we need, right? If we take a look at this over here, it's looking pretty similar, right? Pretty similar. So now let's go all the way to oh, this one. This one is 983. So let's go all the way to 1983. So all the way out to 1983, as you can see right over here, right there. So that's five columns. So remember, this is 1983 in total. So it's anything between this one and 1983. So let's just say it's going to be four columns, okay? So it's gonna be four columns. And as you can see, the spacing on the left and right between anything below 1983 is around 80 pixels on the left and right. And we've got around maybe 32 or 40 pixels on the inside between each element. So if we wanna do that, we can go ahead, select the layout grid, paste it down. We change the count to 12, make sure it's 12. Margin is going to be 80. And maybe we use the gutters of 40 to make sure that the spacing in between is a little bit larger. And then what we can do is we can go ahead, double click and select our content. Command C, Command V, paste that down, stretch all the way out to the left and right. And we can just duplicate the rectangle. So we've got four just like that. And then we just need to go to our auto layout and make sure the spacing in between is 40, the left and right margin is 80, and you'll see magically everything will snap in between. So if you can see, if I stretch it, it's going to look just like dribble, okay? So if we go ahead and resize this as well, it's exactly what we need. So hopefully you're following along. Now, it doesn't end there, okay? So if you remember, there are no strict guidelines in terms of how your grid layouts should work. You can use any sort of numbers as long as it achieves what you want to achieve. If you take a look at any web app or any website, every platform will use some sort of different grid layout. As long as your measurements are divisible by four, which if you didn't realize, we are using measurements of divisible by four. Everything is between four, eight, 12, 16, uh, 20, 24, 32, etc. Et that is all you need to know. Then if you wanna take this even further to be able to visually see how this actually works in the real world, you can go ahead and go to plugins, go to breakpoints. I've got a, a free trial, hit continue. I can go ahead and create a new adaptive layout, move this blue box beneath it. And as you can see, we have a grid layout for anything between zero to 320, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and make sure we have zero at the end. Then the next breakpoint is 320, as we know, right? So anything between zero to 320, then we have anything between 320 to 630. So if I go back, it's going to be 630, just like that. Then we have anything between 630 to 814, right? Is that right? Should be 960, right? Or was it 814? I don't remember. Let's just use 960. I think 960 is a more common uh, viewport size. Let's just use 960 for now. So the next one is going to be 960 just like that. And then the next one following that is going to be 1983. So selecting this, I hit plus one, nine, eight, whoops, eight, three. All I need to do now is hit the plus icon, go to uh, and select the first frame. Anything between 320 and 630, we'll use this grid layout. Anything between 630 and 960, we'll use this grid layout. Anything between 960 and 1983, we'll use this grid layout. So if I hit Control G on my keyboard to hide the grid layouts, I zoom into my canvas over here, we can see that this will make you a designer for dribble. As you can see, once you pass through that breakpoint of 960, bang, we go to three column. Go all the way down, go to two column, all the way down to one column. And really, that's exactly how grid layouts actually work. You just have to think about what are the layouts what are the breakpoints that you need to really cater for the information that you have? Just remember, every single website is going to be different. Dribble is different to Facebook. Facebook is different to Instagram. And you need to think about what is the best layout 
that works perfectly with the content that you want to display. You can't just repurpose a grid layout. And it's really important for you to utilize measurements that are all divisible by four. So if you wanna learn more, if you really do wanna advance in Figma or really advance that end-to-end -end process of knowing exactly how you start in Figma all the way to handing designs over to developers and everything in between, make sure to check out my Figma Masterclass course. If you're wondering what are some great tools to also use to manage your grid systems, your topography scales, your design systems, your style guides, and all this great stuff for your UI projects, I would recommend three key tools. If you are actually looking to manage a design system specifically with your developing team, I would definitely recommend zerohight.com or storybook.js.org. These two platforms are great for managing design systems. However, if you're looking to manage an entire project with all the pages, all the design systems and the style guides, I would definitely recommend Zeppelin, which is a great tool that I've talked about on my channel before, where you can actually go ahead and sync all your designs, all your files up into their platform, and it will structure everything for you. So with that said, guys, if you did enjoy this video, make sure to gently smash that like button, subscribe for the Diehard fans, and I will see you in another video very soon. Ooh.